My name is Anna Metter. I'm a 4-H Youth Development Agent with the Allen County and University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Services with the College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment. Today, I'm going to be putting together a video for origami, making paper cranes, because I've been asked to do so. It's something I've really enjoyed. I also am a little festive today. I thought I'd kind of break out my camp gear because I can't wait. I'm hoping that camp happens this year. So I uh, just felt the need to wear my camp gear today. But we're going to get started with making paper crane, origami paper cranes. The supplies that you need is pretty much you and some paper. Paper type doesn't really matter. Today I've taken a really large sheet of art paper uh, just because I want the crane to be as large as possible so you can see what's going on. So first and foremost, the first step is going to be by having a square sheet of paper. I also chose a long sheet of paper because it's not perfectly square, right? It's a rectangle. So I wanted to demonstrate if you just have like printer paper, how you're gonna do this, that first step is by making it square. So I'm gonna fold down one corner of the paper so that when I fold it at the tip here, everything aligns nice and neat from corner on, okay? And I'm going to smooth that out, and that's going to give me one large triangle. And it's going to look a lot like this, okay? So this portion right here, once it's cut, will be my large square. This means that this extra rectangle here is extra. I don't need it. So I'm going to flip that down over. doesn't matter if I which way I flip it. I'm going to flip it down, that rectangle, so that I can now see that here's my extra rectangle. This is what I don't need. I'm going to take my nails, you can also take a pencil or something like that, and crease that line like this. I'm going to crease it a couple of times. You can cut this if you've got scissors. A lot of times when I'm making these, a lot of times I don't have scissors on me. So I will just fold it back and forth maybe two times each direction and try to crease it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tear. So I start my tear there to make sure I've got a good little tear. You're going to see how easy this tear is going to take place. Now, sometimes it does have a little bit of a, it has a little tough time, so take it nice and slow as you're making that rip. And for the most part, it almost does about perfect. See, just about perfect. So I don't need this rectangle piece anymore. I'm going to set that aside. Now I've got one large square. Step two, now you're going to take this, your, your square, and I'm going to actually fold it. You can see my creases in the middle. I'm going to fold it the opposite direction, making another crease the opposing way. So I'm going to have creases now. Once I straighten this out, I'm going to have creases that run to all four corners, looking like this. Then I'm going to go one step further and with my triangle, and I'm going to fold one tip down and crease to make even another small triangle. So in the end, I'm actually gonna have eight triangles and I'm just gonna fold this one down, matching to the center seam, matching to the corner, and creasing that down, preferably using your nails. The creases are pretty important for having as uh, crisp and clean of a paper crane as possible. So now that I've done that, I've got four, now I've got eight different triangles, now I'm ready to go. So. Third step is, or fourth step is going to be to take two opposite points. I honestly don't care which opposite points, but take two opposite points. This, in my opinion, is probably one of the trickiest uh, parts of the crane. Um, it doesn't have to be. Uh, just follow through and watch me, and then you can pause and repeat if you need to. So essentially, all four corners of this triangle series are going to end up where my fingers are pinching up here. So by doing that is I just took one of the outside corners. I'm going to pull it to where it's meeting at the center. When you see that, you can see that um, that center fold is kind of bulking a little bit. I'm actually just going to naturally push that in. So now that corner is now hidden in here. So I've got part of a diamond going on here. Same thing. I'm going to grab the opposing corner, pinch it here to the center. Uh, by turning it on the side, I'm just going to smooth that out and look. Now I've got one large diamond. Now my points are at this end and they're all gathered at this end. So I'm smoothing that out. Now is our next step. 
with all the points gathered at the side loose ends here, gathered point here, uh, with this side up, I'm going to take and we're going to make a kite out of our current diamond. So all points are gathered. I'm going to take one of the fins, doesn't matter which because you're going to do it to all four, and match it up on that center line here. And I'm going to crease that. And I just matched it to that center seam line we've already developed. I'm going to take this other side. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm creating a small little kite. Then I'm going to flip to the other side. So I've got this side done. I'm going to flip to this other side. Same thing. I'm going to fold those in, matching to that center seam. And then I'm going to do that on the fourth one. And when you get all those done, it should look like this, okay? Those sides look identical. Next step, I'm going to take this little triangle that's been developed at the top, okay? I'm going to crease it exactly where those other ones meet on top. And I'm going to give a good solid crease here. I may even take an ink pen. Sometimes I find this is really handy, especially if you don't have much nails, to crease it down the center fold. Just give me a good solid crease. So it can help me with my next step. So great. It didn't matter which way I did this. I could have done it the opposite way, okay? Because you're going to do it both ways. So I've got it like this. I'm going to open that back up with my kite. Then I'm going to actually open both of these flaps, okay? By doing that, I'm going to take the very point here. I'm going to, keeping this little triangle kind of pressed down here just a little bit, I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to go from like a small kite to a tall skinny kite. And I simply just folded those up just like that. Now, if that was a little quick, just wait. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, okay? So, same thing. We're gonna bend this down. We're gonna make sure that crease is good to go. We're gonna open that up. We're gonna open flap one, flap two. Take the center point here, okay? Hold, pick, kind of pinching right here at the center triangle. I'm going to pull that up, okay? That's going to draw these sides in, and I'm going to make a skinny kite on this side. And the seams are already created. That's why I said creasing is pretty important, um, because that makes the rest of these steps really nice and easy. They typically just fall right into place. So right now, I've got a kite. Looks identical on both sides, but I got chicken legs. I got fat chicken legs, okay? I want the chicken legs to be facing down and the points to be sticking up, okay? Okay. So with the two chicken legs, because there's no split here, okay, just a split here, I'm going to take one of the chicken legs. You're going to do it with all four chicken legs. So I'm going to take one of the chicken legs here, and I'm going to fold it to the center seam again, um, and I'm going to make a skinny chicken leg. So once I do that, and I crease that, it's going to look like this, okay, one chicken leg. I'm going to do that to the second side, and then I'll show you what that looks like. And then you might have already guessed it, but we replicated everything over and over and over with the origami paper crane. So I did that on both sides, okay, of this side. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do side three and side four really quickly. Make sure you get the creases. I find that creasing good is really going to help with this next step. Okay, so we went from having four fat chicken legs. Once we crease these down, we're going to have two skinny chicken legs, okay? We went from fat chicken to skinny chicken. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got this facing this way with these two chicken legs. I'm going to turn it on its side so that you see it narrow like this. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it from its side. So this was the first way we had it with the wings facing out. This side, we're just looking at the edge of the wings. We're going to open it up, okay? And there's already this natural middle crease here. We're going to this up okay and then we're going to be folding it in on itself um so if you've done it just right the wings will uh they'll fold in because this is actually creating your head and sorry your neck and your tail your head and your tail so it doesn't have to be perfect because i always choose the uglier side and that's going to be my head okay so one side's done Turn it to the other narrow side, looking at the edge. Once again, replicating the exact same thing on the opposite side. I took it from side, turned it, open up, middle seam here, flip it up. This one's going to be nice and easy. Seam right up. Okay. I like to try to make these as pretty as possible to kind of 
fold them exactly in half. Um, this is definitely my prettier side. This one didn't fold nice, quite nice and pretty as I want. No problem. Um, that's what I'm going to use in that last step. So now it's really taking place. You can almost see the start of a crane. Uh, next, you're going to fold one of these wings down. You now have developed your wings. You're only going to be able to fold so far down if you've done this properly, okay? So you're going to fold down and because I still have a little bit of a ledge so that naturally I can only fold so far, then I'm going to crease that, flip it on the other side, same thing, turn down, crease like that, got my wings done. This one's going to be my tail because he's going to stay upright and nothing happens to him. The head gets bent down, which is why typically if it's the lesser pretty side, you don't actually notice it as much because I'm going to go down approximately one inch, color whatever your preference is, bend that down like that to make my head. I know the crane's coming together. Last part is you can do one of two things. You can kind of take your fingers and kind of um, placing them kind of in the folds here, kind of pull out a little bit, and you're actually going to give life and body to your bird. Um, by doing that, you spread it out. Um, or some people, there is a, a divot here on the very bottom, a little hole that's created. Some people like to blow air into that to puff it out. Whatever your mechanism is, either way works. And just like that, you have a completed paper crane. Nice and pretty. Folding and storage is nice and easy. You can just fold it right back up, no problem. He folds right back again really nicely. So today's lesson with the origami paper crane does really well to speak to the Japanese culture. So there is a book, if you picked up one of the kits from this week, there's a book uh, about a thousand cranes that this sick child makes in her, in her story as she gets better. Uh, the paper cranes, and I won't reveal it all, uh, have an important meaning, cranes do, in the Japanese culture. So I encourage you to take a look at that, uh, learn some more about that. But today we have completed a paper crane. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have questions, I've done some teleconferencing to help kids out with this. So just give me a call. would be more than happy to help. I hope that you all have a great day. Once again, you can contact me once again at Anna Metter. Um, at the UK Allen County Extension Office at 270-237-3146 or my email at Anna, A-N-N-A, period, matter, M-E-A-T-O-R, one at uky.edu and I'd be more than happy to help you out. I hope you have a great day and enjoy your paper crane.